Brothers and sisters, my extended family, how are you guys out there today? I hope you are tremendously well. I hope you guys are reading the Torah. I hope you guys have secured your relationship with Yahuwah and called upon the name of Yahushua for your salvation. And this is going to be a awesome discussion, I hope. I had a lot of fun as I was reading through this. And I was like, oh yeah, this is great. And what you see in front of you is a big set of books, right? If you look at it, I don't, I don't know how many there are, three, six, nine, twelve. There's at least 20, 20 books right here. And this is called the Talmud. Now, this Talmud is literally, it is from Babylon. They, uh, it is the, what they call the Oral Torah. And um, it is something contrary to the Torah, which right out of the gate, you would say, well, we shouldn't be, you know, we, we shouldn't be dabbling with this at all. Well, absolutely not. But to understand today's lesson, I have to take you down into this and explain that the Jews of today believe this set of doctrine, the oral Torah, over the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator in the Torah. So when we speak to our Jewish friends, and they are Talmud believers, there's things inside the Talmud which, frankly, honestly, I mean, I, I can't, I would never be able to defend. One of them is relationships with a three-year-old girl uh, and that being okay um, and you, you guys see where I'm going with this but since this is a family friendly as best as we can you have to see that there is a tremendous amount of red flags when you go and you 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 get this set of books and all these laws because instead of you know what they say is whatever 613 laws instead of you get the 613 laws you would end up with thousands and thousands of them. And in this set of thousands of these instructions, if you're a Jew, people that are not of the Jewish religion are considered goyim. And we would be, um, they, they hate us, right? We're, we're worse than dogs. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy how, you know, in, in the Bible, our, our creator has never classified people in such a manner and and you know we have gentiles and that word is basically when you're out of covenant with yahuwah and if you're out of covenant that means you're not keeping the law statutes and commands of him and you know his promise to us is that if you keep my law statutes and commands i will be your elohim and you will be my people you know what greater honor would you have what we have as created creatures that our creator wants to have a relationship like this with us. That he doesn't just want a relationship, but he has given us a, a doctrine, a good doctrine, a very good doctrine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the Torah. And so when you take in these extracurricular books, like the Talmud or anything else, there's a problem with that. Because we're going to go over this real quick, and it's about the ritual hand washing before meals. And where did this come from? So this starts and it says, traditionally Jews are required to wash their hands and say a blessing before eating any meal that includes bread or matzah. The ritual known as netalat yadium is typically done using a two-handled cup, but any vessel would do. These are various customs regarding how the water should be poured, but a common practice is to pour twice on the right hand followed by twice on the left hand, this is reversed for those who are left-handed. And then it says Has Hasidic custom is to pour three times on each hand. So another sect of religion, um, the Hasidic Jews, using the non-dominant hand to pour first can feel unnatural or awkward, highlighting that the washing is done for ritual rather than pragmatic purposes. The tradition is unrelated to personal hygiene and a person is still required to perform this ritual even if his or her hands are clean. It is also customary not to speak 
following the recitation of this blessing until reciting the blessing for bread and partaking of some. So here's a, you know, this is, let's, let's look at the, the origins of this, the origins of Netalat Yadium, the tradition of Netalat Yadium prior to, to eating bread originated with the rabbis of the Talmud. It derives from various practices concerning ritual impurity from when the ancient temple stood in Jerusalem. The priests who perform the temple rituals have given gifts of oil, wine, and wheat were given. Guys, I'm trying to read without my glasses, so this is a, a bit of a struggle. Wheat that can be eaten after ritual washing. For various reasons, the ancient rabbis extended this practice to all Jews before eating meals. Some sources suggest that the practice was instituted so the temple's washing ritual would not be forgotten. Right? Look at this madness. Right? Here's a, a cup. This one has, a, there, there, it does have two handles on it. Right there. So this is a two-handle cup, but this sink looks really disgusting. And for some um, odd reason, this is the, I guess, maybe it's not disgusting. Maybe it's just the, the stonework or something, but that doesn't look clean to me. Um, so th <laughs> this is all very, very important because I am going to lay something really awesome out. Right here in this sefer, we are going to go into Mark, and we are going, going to go into the ch seventh chapter of Mark, which is... Uh, an amazing, it's an amazing, um, it's an amazing chapter. So let's begin right here and let's see what we can put together because hopefully now that you are somewhat educated in, uh, you know, the things of, of that nature and how you're supposed to wash your hands if you're a Jew and the traditions of men, let's see if this chapter will make sense to you guys. Mark 7, 1. Then came together unto him the Perishim and certain of the scribes. And the Perishim are the Pharisees. Again, it's the primitive root to separate literally, um, but these Pharisees, it, it, here's here's the big part right here. It's a religious sect formed around the time of the Maccabean and pre, uh, pre, prevalent in Yahushua's time. So this is where it came together. So verse two, and when they saw, so you, let me go before we, we start that. So you have all of these, these religious leaders, right? These are the um, religious leaders that think they are everything, right? They have been selected. Guys, I'm about... To sneeze. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> they are the, they were the go-to guys. They were the nice, they were in nice clothes. They received the nice tithings. They were, they knew how to read the Torah and they were, they were the, what they thought was the bomb back in the day. But it was a religious sect that went outside of the law, statutes and commands and it started keeping the Talmud, right? The, the, the Jewish mysticism, the Babylon, um, <laughs> they're their guide to life. So we have to understand this. So these people came and they're, they're starting to judge him. And, and when they saw some of his Talmudian eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. Now, we, you guys now know that that's not even a command in the Torah. There's no such thing that you're supposed to wash your hands before eating bread or any kind of silly little rituals like that. Our, our creator is not, he doesn't do stuff quite like this. This is, this is way outside of what he would do. Verse three, for the perishim and all the Yahudim, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, I think, I don't, I think it's brazen maybe, vessels and of tables. So we're talking about traditions of men, right? And our Messiah in the Bible, everything. There's nothing supposed to be outside of the Torah. If, if something is outside of the Torah, it, it has to be very carefully scrutinized because we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to take anything, especially anything that goes against what the Torah would say. So we have all of these guys that are washing dishes, washing hands, and doing you know two two handled cups. You know that's not in the Torah. That's all outside of the Torah. So that's doctrines of men. So verse five, do the parashim and scribes ask him, why walk not your Talmudian according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Verse six, he answered and said unto them. Well, has Yeshiyahu, and that's Elias, Esaias, excuse me. Well, Yeshiyahu prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And, you know, 
guys, every Christian that's sitting there eating pork, their hearts are far away from our Creator. If you're serving Him on a Sunday and you believe that our Messiah is a, a, a new Sabbath, you're you're not serving our creator your heart is far are far from the creator so this is the same stuff this goes for all of us where is our hearts verse 7 how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men guys the commandments of men is that all food has been made clean right that is not a that is not a bible that is not a bible thing and there's no such thing as all food has been made clean right serving serving Yah on Sunday, that's that's not a thing. He, he's not in those temples. He's not in a, a man-made uh, pagan you know, ritual thing. It doesn't matter how much it feels good or how the orchestra or the band or whatever it is makes you feel or, or how holy the, the, the call service is at the end. It doesn't matter. He's not there. I mean, and you know that Hasatan, Satan, can can do that same stuff. He can he can make you feel all giddy. He can he can be the god of that era, and you don't know what you're worshiping if you're worshiping our Creator on the wrong day. So, for lay verse eight, for laying aside the commandment of Elohim, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them. Full well ye reject the commandment of Elohim that ye may guard your own tradition. Guys, how many people are guarding the tradition of Christmas? How many people still celebrate uh, Istar, Istar, where it's a fertility? It's all the, the origins are, are horrible, horrible origins of evil, great evil. But yet we, 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 churches, churches even have Easter. They have Easter service and that's that. It, none of this happened on those times. Right, we have a schedule that our Creator has given us to us the the appointed times, and 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 Easter and and Christmas are is is not them. Verse ten, excuse me. For Moshe said, "Honor your father and mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die the death." But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, "It is Corban," and and that means it's holy, it's it's uh, something brought near the altar, sacrificial present. It is Corban that it is to say a gift by whatsoever you might be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. And again, it's all in the Torah that we are supposed to take care of our father and mother. We're supposed to take care of the elderly. We're not supposed to. Th these guys had invented a, a new command that if you take something and it's to the altar and say it's a gift, then somehow you're, you don't have to carry on the obligations to your parents. And that's not in the Torah. And so Yahushua, he's schooling these folks, right? He is completely schooling them. Sounds like I have a cold. Verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things ye do. So he's schooling them on all of this. So they came to school him and they're like, why don't you keep to the traditions of your elders? Well, the traditions of the elders are of Satan, Right, these guys made up all this stuff, and it's these guys that got to put into rabbi spots, and it's like they took their what they called their holy word and put it into the Talmud, <clears throat> and so they take the words of men over the words of Yah, and that's a problem. That it's just a tremendous problem. Verse fourteen, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, "Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man." that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those they, those are they that defile the man. Guys, before, this is where the Christians will jump to this, and this is where, in, in a lot of translations, it says all food has been made clean. And anything in parentheses is the translator's best guess. It's what they thought, or, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's obviously wrong, because, first of all, you have to define what food is. The food is defined in Leviticus 11. It, it's what we we know of, and pig is not that, right? And so it's not, this is not making all food clean. Verse 16, he's schooling these guys, and he's getting everybody to understand that, hey, what you're, if you wash your hands and eat your bread, it doesn't matter if you wash your hands and eat your bread. It probably is a good idea to get the grime off, but you're not going to die from it. And so it is not what... 
if you have dirty hands, you're not going to die from it, is his point. Verse 16, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was, in, when he was entered into the house from the people, his Talmudian asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly and goes out into the draught, purging all food. Again, this is, you have to define food. You can't say swine is food. It has never been food. Shrimp is a food. Lobster is a food. Roadkill is a food. Human corpses are food, right? If all food has been made cling, then okay, a human corpse is okay to eat, right? You have to go down that same logic and it, it doesn't work like that. So verse 19, because it, it enters not into his heart, but into the belly and goes out into the draught, purging all food. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles him far from within. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And I think I said lascivious, lasciviousness um, incorrectly. So he's telling us, what it takes to be evil, right? He, this is what defiles a man. If you have, if you're a murderer, you're, you're defiled, right? You're an adulterer. If you're cheating on your wife, you're cheating on your spouse, you're destroying your family. You're a family wrecker, right? That's, that's part of great evil. That's why pornography is, an, is one of the greatest evils in the entire world. There's no excuse for it. There's no excuse as a real man or a real woman to be into pornography. There's no excuse. You'll, you'll destroy your marriage. You, it's, it's a fake world and it's sick. Listen to all this stuff. Pride, foolishness, blasphemy. How many of us fall under these, right? That is what corrupts a man. So if you want to see what is in what our creator and his son believe are evil, this is it. Because that is what men's heart are. And it's not going to be that you have dirty hands and you have a speck of dust that goes in you that kills you. It's going to be that you you have these kind of evil things that come from with, within. And it comes from your heart. Right? Excuse me. All these evil things coming from within defiled the man, and from it. Thence he arose and went into the borders of Zor and Zidon, and entered into a house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. So this is, again, this is our superhero Messiah. This is where he's made such a reputation, such a name for himself because of his his healing of the sick, he, of taking casting out the demons, uh, walking a walk that nobody has ever walked before. This is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, the Messiah. Verse 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Yahweh, right? And so when we're talking about it, that's that's a Grecian. And again, coming from the Talmud and coming from all the things, you are not supposed to congregate you're not supposed to get near you're not supposed to get and, and that's actually from the Torah too we're not supposed to associate with those outside of what we believe because we're not to get corrupted by that but the the fact that this woman was talking to our messiah was a was a huge deal a, a Syrophoenician by nation and she besought him that he would cast forth the demon out of her daughter but yahushua said unto her let the children First be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. What in the world is he saying to this? He's saying that he did not, he is there to minister into the house of Yashrael. He is there to bring forth his disciples and bring forth the Besor, the good news, right? And so what he said to her is essentially, uh, I have stuff to do. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, you're a Grecian and uh, it, it's not, it's not to be done. And, uh, and she answered and said unto him, yes, Adonai, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, for this saying, go your way, the devil is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid up on the bed. Now there's a couple of things here, right? She, you know, we are in, in the Talmud. If we are a goyim, we are a dog. We are lesser than people and we can be spit upon we can be thieved from according to this um you can do all sorts of evil stuff according to the talmud that goes against yah's laws and so this is about faith right here 
This is about this woman's faith that is that look, she said even the dogs get the crumbs under the table and which you know, she's essentially saying it as their viewpoint was. Um just just an amazing thing she's she's saying. Verse 31. And again, departing from the coast of Zor and Zidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of the Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment of it in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Pathak, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plain. And he charged them. Again, this is our Messiah. He's always, hey, he's like, hey, this is great. I know it, but let's not tell anyone about this, right? And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them so much, the more a great deal they published it, right? He's the good news. Why Why wouldn't you? <laughs> he was just, uh, you know, trying to get them not to go crazy and get so much stirred up. But he, he was a celebrity. He was, he was a celebrity. He is our celebrity. You know, he's our king. Verse 37, and were beyond measure, measure astonished, saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So, my brothers and sisters, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you got something out of this. And um, I believe that, you know, I, I, I hope and I pray that you guys are seeking the Torah, that you're seeking the ways of Yahuwah that uh, this is a part of your life, and this is what should be a part of our lives. We're supposed to be sitting around discussing this, and we're supposed to be speaking of the greatness of it, and it is not too much to bear. It is not a burden. There's no such thing as a bad law. There's no such thing that one that puts you in bondage. There's not a, anyone can, you know, if anyone out there believes there is a certain law that puts you into bondage, let's talk about it. Where's that? Post it inside, right? Um, there's nothing but freedom. And that is that is what the freedom of the Torah is. When you are in the Torah, keeping the Torah, and you know that is the will and the wishes of our creator, then it's freedom. It's freedom. You don't have the guilt of living evil and, and doing evil stuff because the Torah is about goodness. It's about holiness and righteousness. It's about keeping the law, statutes, and, and precepts of our, our creator. Good things. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't destroy. Don't kill your don't kill your kids to Moloch you know that everything good comes out of the Torah and when you want to take the laws of God and put them in the trash or say they don't apply to us anymore that's that's foolishness why would you take your own creator's tech manual and toss it in the trash you know we're all trying to get through this world right here and the kingdom to come is coming the world that is on its way is going to be amazing and they're everywhere look soldiers everybody's looking for soldiers our creators looking for soldiers right now are you willing to keep his law statutes and commands are you willing to keep your body snake bite free are you willing to stay in his ordinances and st separate yourself from this world that's what it's all about are we ready to separate ourselves from the world and follow everything with yah it all begins in the torah salvation begins at the stake much love folks